Welcome to the Working with Data Trees webinar. I'm Gil Akos, and with me today is Ronnie Parsons. Uh, we are Studio Mode, and um, we're really excited to have you uh, here in attendance for the webinar as a part of our Mode Lab webinar series. This webinar is uh, titled Working with Data Trees and Grasshopper, and the reason that we decided to conduct this webinar is that uh, the main challenge we heard uh, from users of Grasshopper is that they are constantly running into uh, challenges with data trees. So if you want to implement Grasshopper into your creative process effectively and fluidly, you really need to have a strong understanding of data trees. Data, how it's stored, accessed, and associated, is really the threshold that separates you from powerful routines in Grasshopper. So we're going to start with the presentation on the main principles of working with data trees and then incrementally unpack a set of data-related techniques uh, through a series of live exercises. Um, I will be running the presentation uh, and Ronnie will be answering questions. So with two instructors, we're really hoping to uh, produce a kind of interactive experience uh, that's personalized to you uh, during this webinar. Uh, some additional topics that we're going to cover um, are what is actually a data structure, and why data trees, specifically in Grasshopper, look the way they do, and how to navigate, manipulate, and grow your data tree in an organized way. And we're going to have plenty of time during the webinar to have uh, some question and answer sessions. Okay, so just a little bit about um, our studio. Um, we're Studio Mode. We're a multidisciplinary design practice based in Brooklyn, New York. Um, really, we have kind of three sets of activities that we engage in um, under the auspices of the three titles that you see here, Open, Lateral, and Design. Um, open is really our share source initiative, um, consisting of a web, web repository of, um, of learning material, as well as uh, events that include uh, workshops and webinars as a way for um, us to interact and collaborate with you um, through the, uh, through the idea of learning. Lateral is our uh, consulting uh, services, which include um, both custom tool creation, um, as well, like in Grasshopper, for instance, as well as uh, um, CNC uh, production, including laser cutting and uh, CNC knife cutting. And then design is our uh, um, design studio in terms of how we uh, engage design projects, and really our goal is to design and make things every day. And that re is reflected in both of the other two entities in that um, we have a very uh, deep connection to material and we also love to do things like programming. And all of those things filter back into um, open and lateral. So um, we also have uh, Mode Lab. Uh, this website, which you registered for the webinar through, and uh, this is the location where we share uh, knowledge related to uh, things like Grasshopper and scripting in, in Python. Um, so there's a series of lear um, learning exercises here, as well as um, this is a way for you to find out about upcoming events. Um, some of the things that we do under Mode Lab include uh, workshops here in our studio space, and one of the recent ones that we had was called uh, the Patterning Lab, uh, which investigated parametric patterns and digital fabrication with our laser cutter. And another one that we had just recently with our guest instructor, Skylar Tibbetts, was called the Nonlinear Lab, which investigated growth systems and digital fabrication. Um, we also have a Facebook page, um, and we're really excited about uh, this initiative that we've started. The Facebook page is only a couple weeks old. Um, but really, it's a way for us to uh, connect with you, uh, to share most the most current and up-to-date information regarding events, content, etc., as well as a way for you to connect uh, with other uh, users and uh, former Mode Lab participants. So uh, if, you, if you haven't already, bounce over to Facebook and give us a like, and you can connect with both us and the other people within the webinar. So. Um, a little bit about the webinar uh, administration. Um, this is being recorded and will be distributed later as a series of shorter video exercises that uh, you can then access um, after the conclusion of the webinar. Um, we're also going to include the PDF of the presentation as well as the exercise files, both the ones that we prepared for you ahead of time and the ones that we do together. 
Um, you should have received an email link with the webinar source files, uh, both via email and it should be also in the chat window. And um, as I said before, Ronnie and I will be doing uh, conducting this webinar at the same time. Um, so we will be able to answer your questions on the fly. So if you have any technical issues, just drop them into the questions box. And we'll, if there are consistent questions, um, Ronnie will redirect them to me and we'll uh, go over them together. All right, so a little bit before we get into data trees, um, we need to kind of take a step back and look at first what Grasshopper is. It's a node-based algorithm editor integrated with Rhino's 3D modeling tools. And it allows users to define logical relationships between design parameters that define a parametric model. And a, mo a parametric model is just one wherein the parts of the design relate and change in a coordinated way as defined by the various parameters and dependencies stated. The key thing is that the definition of those parameters and dependencies is done by you. All right, so here's an example of uh, what might be understood as a uh, kind of parametric diagram where you have a series of uh, parameters, L1, R1, L3, R2, and the change of those parameters affects the end shape of this profile. And this is done kind of in a coordinated way as the different parameters are related. And if you instantiate four versions of that profile, then you can start to build something like this vase or tower profile. All right, so some things to remember before we get started. The parameters of a particular design are declared, not its shape. So we're not going to be modeling a specific shape, but we're going to be modeling relationships and the values that define those relationships. Because the process of developing a parametric model is explicit, you have to have an idea of where you're going and how you might get there before you can actually start. Also, the various inputs, processing, and desired results in the planning process of deciding um, kind of where you're going to go before you start um, are referred to as algorithms. And in order to precisely define and control those algorithms, you have to be able to effectively manage the inputs and outputs and how they're organized, what's coming out of the output and how it is actually structured in terms of an organization. In Grasshopper, that data organization is done through a data structure called data tree. So the things that we're going to go over today are uh, what are data trees, what are all of the index values that go into a data tree, if I have a data tree, how can I precisely navigate through it, if you end up finding that your data tree is wild, how might we tame it and make it uh, clear in terms of how it's structured, and what else are data trees good for, how can I use, use them to create unique labels. Okay, so where we're going to start is with uh, simple primitives. We're going to use points today as a way to actually um, review all of the content related to data trees, just because they're simple and they're um, easy, an easy way for us to coordinate something that is um, describing how something is structured relative to a position in space. Um, so just as a quick refresher, points are represented by an ordered set of numbers called coordinates, most likely Cartesian in nature. So if we're familiar with modeling in Rhino, we know that we can create a point. We can define it by either clicking in the uh, viewport or defining its x, y, z coordinates. Those are Cartesian coordinates. Uh, a little bit more about points. Uh, they're, again, like I said, a basic geometrical element. Uh, we typically use them as an underlay for generating more complex types. Um, they can also be extracted from other more complex types. For instance, you can get points on a surface. And all points reside within a specific coordinate system, which we're going to call space. And that space is usually the world or X, Y, Z um, coordinate space. All right, so um, here we have a representation of a point in X, Y, Z space on the right. And we also know that that point can exist on any coordinate system. For instance, a different plane uh, that's oriented uh, separately from, let's say, the X, Y plane. All right, so with that, let's bounce over to uh, Rhino, and let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we're going to do is um, we're going to create just a point in space with Rhino. So if I click that point, the point command, and I create a point, I now have a point existing, if I'm in top view, on the XY plane. And, of course, if I were to go to the properties uh, window, I could see that 
this point, go to details, has the coordinates 1.520. All right, so we're going to do that same thing, but in Grasshopper. So I like to um, split my screen between Rhino and Grasshopper. So I drag my Rhino window over to the corner and open up the Grasshopper window by typing that into the command line. And the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a point right, by defining the x, y, and z coordinates. So points fall under the vector category. So we're going to go to the vector tab, point, point x, y, z. Drop that onto the canvas. And you'll notice now that it has three inputs asking for x, y, z. And then also, as we noted in the PowerPoint, a coordinate system in which those points are going to exist. All right. So uh, for now, we're going to leave the world x, y as the default, and um, we're going to define some inputs for x and y. So the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, grab our friend the number slider from Pram's input, drop that in, double click, and let's see if we go from 0 to 6 as our domain, plug that into x, now our point can exist, which is represented in the Rhino viewport as a crosshair can exist along the x-axis based on the value I specify here. So this is my first parameter. I'm going to rename my slider by right-clicking and calling this x position. Right? And I also want it to be able to work in the y direction. So I'm going to start to drag my slider, tap Alt, create a duplicate of it, and rename it y-pause, and connect it. 